Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the series, The Anti-Meta, in which we challenge ourselves to play decks that are not in the top meta of MTG Constructed. As always, I am Owen 9 and today we'll be experimenting with a Boros deck uh, that is primarily based on Hactos the Unscarred uh, from the new Theros set. Uh, the reason I believe that this uh, deck qualifies as an anti-meta is because of the large number of removal and lockdown spells that we've seen in Theros. Of course, it's a very enchantment-steeped uh, expansion set, and so uh, you're going to be seeing a lot of these spells uh, if you attempt to run the uh, Theros Constructed event, and so I think that uh, Hactos is very well suited to combat that. So, first things first, uh, with Hactos, he is 2 red, 2 white uh, for a 6-1 legendary creature, Human Warrior, and uh, what Hactos says is that he first must attack each combat if able, and then second, uh, and the most important uh, aspect of this card, uh, as he enters the battlefield, you choose a number at random, with either 2, 3, or 4, and Hactos the Unscarred has protection from everything. Uh, Hactos protection from each converted mana cost other than the chosen number. So if he comes in and he rolls a 2, um, he has protection from 0, 1, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Um, which is quite nice uh, because uh, typically removal spells anchor around 3. You're going to be seeing a lot of banishing lights um, and things like that. So... Uh, we're running four copies of him, and uh, of course he's legendary, so you can only have one on the battlefield at a time. But getting that protection also allows him to get through for six damage each turn, assuming they don't have a blocker that has the exact converted mana cost that you roll when he enters the battlefield. Um, also, people sometimes don't understand what protection means, and they'll attempt to attack into him, and they'll think, oh, he only has one toughness. But protection means he doesn't take damage from anyone who attacks. So that first turn that he hits the battlefield, he has protection, and he's a massive blocker for anything they might have. So just incredibly powerful. Uh, synergizes well with a lot of things we're going to do. Um, and so far, we've had great success with it in the Theros Constructed event. All right, so, so rounding out the deck, we start with three Elsades of Life, Elsade of Life Bounty. Uh, an enchantment creature, Nymph, 1-1 one, one lifelinker, that when you pay one and sacrifice it, target creature or enchantment gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. Now, this won't work for Hactos because Hactos is, uh, will always be have protection from one. So Elsade is not able to give Hactos protection, but he does work with some of the other cards that we have in the set. We run two copies of Shadow Spear. Uh, again, cannot target Hactos, but is nice with some of our other options uh, in order to press uh, gain some lifelink, trample, and then of course, if they are running an Esper uh, deck, which is relatively common, um, as I mentioned in this constructed event, uh, the one to remove hexproof uh, and indestructible as well. But the one to remove hexproof is very nice, uh, particularly um, for the trawler um, and for some of the gods as well. Very, very powerful, and it doesn't have to be equipped to use that ability. It can just be a, an unequipped equipment. We run three copies of Daxus. Now, this might seem a bit strange to run a Devotion card. There's a number of Devotion-esque cards in here uh, that you would see in the... Uh, most people are running mo uh, Mono White Devotion uh, in this event. Uh, he's Legendary, so I normally only like to run three of most Legendaries unless there's something that I'm trying to uh, run a set around. But Daxus is a nice early blocker, and we do gain life. We are running Heliod, so there is that combination with Elsade and everything, and Shadow Spear. So it's a hybrid. This deck really is a hybrid of two forms of, of devotion. We'll see that later. Um, two white for a two X. Toughness is equal to your devotion to white. And whenever another creature enters the battlefield or dies, you gain one life. Careless Celebrate. Now, a lot of people sleep on this card. Um, you don't see it a lot. Mono Red is way too fast and aggressive uh, in standard for this to really... Uh, exist, but it's very good in this format. It's a little bit slower, uh, but what it effectively does is at two, you now have removal for a potentially up to four toughness, um, or you could block and then take that other two damage and put it on another creature. So really powerful in my opinion. Also a shadow spirit you can kind of bully your opponent a little bit because they're staring down potentially five damage and you get some nice lifelink on it. So I really like this card a lot um, and I've seen it uh, put some work in. Four copies of Thrill of Possibility, which seems a bit strange, but then you remember that Boros uh, really struggles with card draw. Uh, the discard feature is nice because it will allow us to kind of filter our hand, filter our deck, 
Uh, we're running simply t uh, 12 of each lands because there is not a Boros land cycle in Theros. Um, actually, well, at least a, a, a scry, a rare land. Uh, so this is nice for hand filtering, and it's really invaluable. Uh, having four copies is uh, essential, uh, particularly with the amount of uh, double white and double red that we're going to have in here. Four copies of Banishing Light. This is really the bane of this uh, event because just everyone runs them, and everyone's running mono white, uh, Pegasus deck. Uh, so this is uh, really essential to lock down because it locks because it's non-land permanents. You can hit the gods, you can hit enchantments. Um, a lot of the time, I'll be using it to lock down their lockdown and kind of allowing me to return my permanent to the battlefield. So really good. Four copies. Two copies of Heliod. Um, a Plains and two Colorless for a 5-5 Legendary Creature God. Indestructible. As long as your Devotion is less than 5, he is not a creature. And whenever you gain life, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on target creature or enchantment you control. And then one Colorless and a Plains and another target creature gains life link. This all goes into the life gain cycle um, that Mono White Devotion is running throughout. And two copies is enough. Um, we have, a, like I said, a lot of double costs here with Elspeth and everything else. So getting to that five is not that difficult, even though we're not running a mono white deck. Four copies of uh, Phoenix of the Ash. Again, a card that doesn't see a lot of play in standard, um, although it's it's pretty nice. Um, it's just, again, at, at three, you need to be getting close to uh, obliterating your opponent if you're running a mono red. But um, this is nice in this format because of the escape feature. Also, it has haste. Um, so it can pair well with some of our other cards. They might think, oh, okay, you roll at Hactos, you're tapped down. Um, they might plus an Ashiok or something like that. So anyways, very nice. Allows you to get damage in quickly. Also, it's a blocker against Pegasus, which is running rampant throughout this set. And, um, it also has a little bit of a fire, fire breathing feature. I guess I should read the text in its entirety. Two mountains and a colorist for a 2-2 flying haste phoenix. Uh, two colorless and a red for plus two plus oh until end of turn fire breathing and then the escape is two red two colorless and three cards comes back with a one one counter one copy of Elspeth Sun's Demise um, two planes two colorless for five loyalty counter legendary planeswalker which is Elspeth all of her abilities are minus so her first is put up to two target creatures or excuse me up to two target creatures you control get plus two plus one and then her minus two, create two one one white human soldier tokens. Uh, and then finally her minus three is to gain five life. And she can for six and exiling four cards, escape from the graveyard. This is kind of nice if you do hit four on Hactos. Uh, you know, an ideal situation may be that you roll out, you have a Phoenix and then next turn is a Hactos. Uh, and then you're able to roll out maybe Elspeth for the plus on turn five. Um, there are instances where she can really buff Hactos to an incredible degree because suddenly you're taking eight damage uh, per turn, or as long as she's still available to uh, buff him. And if our opponent doesn't have anything to deal with his protection, uh, it's a quick game for that. Only one copy. Um, again, try not to go too, too steep on the double costs, but um, in this case, uh, we'll keep it. We mentioned Hactos. Uh, next, we have three copies of Elspeth Conquers Death. Two planes, three colorless uh, for an enchantment saga. The first node says, exile target permanent opponent controls, convert a mana cost three or greater. This is a no-brainer here. This deals with uh, any of the end game spells they may have. Um, very useful. The second node is non-creature spells your opponents cast, cost two more to cast until your next turn. This effectively just slows down uh, your opponent in the middling step if they do have some form of removal or lockdown or they're trying to draw cards. Um, again, this is an end game type card so or mid to end game so uh, if they're stuck on drawing or something like that it can be useful and then finally the uh, third note is to return target creature or planeswalker card from your graveyard to the battlefield and then you either put a counter or a loyalty counter on it or excuse me a 1-1 counter or a loyalty counter on it now we're not running any planeswalkers with the exception of Elspeth so really we're going to be using it for the plus counter uh, effect but this is nice because we are so heavily steeped in creatures 22 to be exact, um, that being able to bring one back that may have been uh, removed uh, is quite nice. Finally, one copy, uh, for the creatures at least, one copy of Ox of Agonus. I'm going to be completely honest, I just love this card for the art and for the style. Uh, so it's not necessarily the strongest card. Um, I've seen it actually, decks built around it in Modern on, on MTG Online. Uh, but 
Uh, let's see here. Two, two mountain, three colorless for a 4-2 ox. And when it enters the battlefield, you discard your hand and draw three cards. And then additionally, uh, escape cost is just two mountains, but you have to exile eight cards from the graveyard. It's a bit steep. Uh, and it comes into uh, the battlefield from um, escaping with a 1-1 counter on it. Now, the real uh, upside on this card, uh, because 5 for a 4-2 is, of course, not that great, is uh, you're able to discard your hand and draw three cards. Very, very useful, again, because uh, both white and red suffer with card draw. Um, with Theros constructed, you're not permitted to run uh, Light Up the Stage, uh, which is a card that most, almost all uh, red decks run. Uh, in order to give them card draw. And then white always has suffered from card drawing effects. So one copy of uh, Ox of Agonus. Finally, with our uh, non-land permanents, Perforus the Bronze-Blooded is a legendary creature god. One red, four colorless for a 7-6 indestructible. Uh, as long as your devotion to red is less than five, he is not a creature. Creatures you control have haste. Very nice passive ability, uh, particularly with some of our bigger boys here, uh, Agonus, Hactos. Uh, we, have, we have some nice damage Quickly, um, Hactos does not have haste, and so that six kind of sits there for a while, and he is vulnerable uh, for that turn and a half. Uh, and then his uh, ability there is one mountain and two colorless. You may put a creature, red creature card or artifact card from your hand of the battlefield, sacrifice it next turn. Now, Hactos, of course, counts as red, so does Agonis and, and several other. So, placing it on the battlefield, it has haste, maybe a last hurrah to get some damage in and close out our opponent. For the lands, as I mentioned, uh, for the lands, as I mentioned, unfortunately, uh, no Boros land cycle uh, for this set. There is Rakdos and Gruul lands, uh, so we do have to stick with just uh, basic basic lands. Now, I was going to run potentially a copy or two of Labyrinth of Skofos, uh, but because there's so many double costs here, um, you can see all of our top end cards practically uh, require double lands. Each land that we take away is a chance of us grabbing that and then being stuck on it and just cursing the day all right so now uh let's with that let's proceed with uh, the constructed event uh we're actually going to pick up from yesterday where we left off uh and in three games yesterday we went two and one uh and we'll keep playing until uh we don't feel like it anymore uh but that's the deck uh let's see how it does Everyone crack your NOS energy drinks now. Okay, not a great hand here. Three planes, no mountains. I do like these cards. I'll tell you what, if one of these was a mountain, I would keep. But uh, we simply can't on one mountain... We're on the draw, but still, I, I'll kick myself if we don't at least keep one mountain. Much, much better. Much, much better. All right, so we will keep that, and I think we'll throw Agonus with a double red. All right, looks like our opponent is playing potentially a Black Devotion deck. Very nice. Not a bad card to top deck. Elsade's value had kind of has diminishing returns, uh, but then it also kind of doesn't because it has that nice um, sack ability. Nice. Okay. Play Daxus. Uh, we will be locking down uh, Eidolon here, unless he has uh, something like. Uh, oh, let's see. I was thinking he might be going like a Abzan route, but he's past combat. Okay. Um, honestly, I don't think that we go as tempting as it is. This banishing will be a lot more useful on his four drop, particularly if he has. Uh, the big 4-4 flyer. So I think we hold off. We keep uh, Daxos in wait. And then we use Thrill of Possibility uh, in, on his turn to ditch a Porphyros and draw a card. I think that's the better route here. Hmm. 
All right, so we're passing to the end here. Very nice. All right, so... Okay, um, I'm still not, like, incredibly threatened by Hateful Eidolon, and this, because uh, this ability has now run its course. It effectively just allows him to fight and gives it some, some toughness. But if we go in the air, um, I expect him to have, I expect him to have some, uh, removal here. Uh, but that's okay. Shadow Spear, second main. There it is. See, there's the abs in. And I'm going to be so glad that I kept my Vanishing Light. Oh my god. Yes, I am. Now the question is next turn if we... Very nice. Now the question is, next turn, if we pull a land, do we roll a Purphoros? Unfortunately, the answer is no. If we get a land here, we'll be able to lock down a uh, Citizen Champion and then potentially load up. Okay, well, the answer is that, doesn't it? Hactos would be really nice here. Okay. Ops to uh, kill the Phoenix. That is okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. It was technically attached to it. Okay. There's an Elsade. Is it Elsade or Elsade? I say like... I, I say it either way. Okay, uh, we can actually run both, so let's do one of these. Uh -huh. I want him to sack it. We want to break through that protection now. Mm -hmm. Very nice. That's okay. Because the permanent remains on the board and it still uh, buffs our... If we do ever pull a... Uh... We do ever pull a Hellion. Oh, sh oops. Oh, no, it has protection. Oh, and <laughs> why? Oh, it's not until end of... Not until end, it's until end of turn. <laughs> okay, well, we just gave our opponent uh, a free one health. If we lose by one health, we'll know who to blame. Nice, there's a Calyx. Foolish mortals have unbalanced our world. Forgive my fear. This will cease your meddling. Hey. Okay. Is it three of them? Okay. Yeah, so we're we're definitely gonna hit this now. Alright, let's uh Let's grab Phoenix. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And 
I think we could leave the mountain in hand. Yeah, in case we pull another uh, thrill of possibility. Yeah, that'll work. A hack dose here would be really nice. Okay. Got a flyer now. There's the card draw. draw land here we might be in a bad way another one okay All right. abzan it is i think he'll be eager to get in for some damage so uh, we're gonna let it through though because we have oh that's fine Yep. And when you know it. Well, <laughs> I think I'm going to have to hit up the Phoenix here just to guarantee we get some lifelink as we stall out here on lands. Very unfortunate. There was also the argument just to run uh, Porphyros out for the next turn if we do, do draw Hactos. Um, hopefully that doesn't bite us in the butt. That's fine. Game four back. And I think we can actually bring it back over to... Mm -hmm. So more removal on Phoenix here is what I anticipate. Okay. Okay. Might be a wrap for us. If we draw another land here, that's really the end. I think we'll have to scoop if we draw another land. Ooh, that's quite loud, isn't it? It's like an audio glitch. Okay, so he's drawn all of them. <laughs> yep. All the, the can trip, so he's just got a, a handful of them. Okay. And even and the thing is though, if we if we are able to get a Rakdos at oh a, ha a Rakdos a Hactos at four, it may still not even matter. It's fine. Um. Yeah, that's fine. Alright, a land here and we have to scoop, unfortunately. Uh, I think he's got this card. card. Okay, and we gotta... Unfortunately... Pulled another land. Let's we'll take a game to our opponent. Let's move on to the next one. Not much we can do there. Uh, drawing consecutive lands on a Boros deck with no outlet is just rough. Alright, so... We'll take our... Uh, take our rewards from that set and we'll uh, 
get right back into it. Yeah, and so with that one, it wasn't even stalling out on double red or double white. That was just simply flooding mid-game against a deck that had uh, incredible card draw. I think if I see an Abzan or a Celestia or something deck like that, that's obviously running around a Citizen Champion, I should really hold on to the Banishes. Excuse me. Hold on to the Banishes for those because you want to eliminate their card draw engine. Okay, um, this is a pretty good opening hand. We're on the draw. We've got double white for Daxus. We've got one red to do Thrill of Possibility. No double red yet for either of these two, but um, depending on what we draw, we can either ditch one or or what have you. Um, 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 uh, yeah. yeah, that seems fine. Okay, and there's the uh, second red. So we'll be able to play Phoenix turn three. Assuming that's how it plays out. There's a Femia, so we uh, definitely will be playing Phoenix turn three. Or, excuse me. Uh, oh. oh, there's the removal. That's fine. Very nice. Now, this is the other uh, meta deck I didn't really mention. Vanishing Light there is great. Particularly because uh, we opted to go double white for Daxus. So he had to use the removal um, in order to get rid of uh, Daxus and clear the way for his tokens. There's a Triton uh, for Death Touch. Gets to fill his graveyard with more things. Um, see if he has another land there. Okay. Very aggressive here. We're going to take a red here. I'm going to roll out Cruel Celebrant because this guy is uh, coming pretty hard. Uh, and then I'll hold on to throw a possibility uh, and we can ditch something uh, later in his turn. Again, this provides a nice chump blocker here because um, whatever he opts to roll to destroy her, assuming it's not exile will result in me uh, killing one of his creatures. Okay, so Agonizing Remorse. He's going to exile. I think we throw a possibility now. Um, or not. Honestly, I, let's see what he does. Let's see what he does. He's probably going to take... He's probably going to take one of the creatures. We'll see. Let's let him... Let's let him decide. I think he's going to take the Ox, honestly. We have four copies of uh, Phoenix of Ash, so... Okay, there it goes. Didn't want that to uh, come back. Right, let's see if he gets in. He can't. It'd be a two-for-one trade. I mean, he can't, but... Probably opts not to. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and run this out. I think we're gonna ditch Ox here. Oh, man... Although the chance of us drawing another land is quite high, so I think uh, maybe the land is good. We already have double red, double white. Let's 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 go with the land. Probably are gonna draw a land here. Yeah, very glad we did, right? There we go. Okay, um I think we can go the red here. We have an equal number of, of mountains and plains, so... But we can roll this out. That's fine. And getting rid of a Daxus is not the end of the world, so... Um, I don't think we're going to get through, because we do just want to establish this board presence. Here, here, discard our hand. We don't like that hand anyways. And that's a much better hand. I like that. I like that. Now, do we pressure him here? I don't think so. I honestly don't think so. It's better as a defender. That was a good trade for us. Ditching a Daxus and a Plains for 
uh, Banishing Light Heliod in a Plains. Next turn we could uh, definitely run both out. If he drops uh, the 4-4 Flyer here, we'd be in a good way. Okay. I'm going to destroy it. And then we're going to get rid of his token, obviously. Will we trade with the uh, t uh, Triton? I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, and we're going to roll out both spells next turn anyways, so... It's fine. We'll take two. First things first, let's go ahead and lock down that spell. I don't like it. And uh, next turn, old boy is going to be getting some lifelink. If he's stuck on lands here... Oh, okay. Now I expect the 4-4 four, four flyer. Maybe? There it is. There it is. All right. So this is going to be fun here. Um, first thing, we have enough for to plus him for lifelink and to lock him down. So we'll start by locking down the shepherd. Mm -hmm. Still not enough uh, to get out Heliod as a permanent, but we do gain some life here, which is very nice. Gain four life, and he gets a token. Very cool. Gary, maybe? Gary at five, but he only has okay, another Triton. Okay. Okay. Sacrifice a creature. Oh, oh, what? Oh, no. Okay. I don't know why it was showing Heliod. <laughs> um, okay, we can roll at Elspeth now for the weenies to provide blockers. Uh, and then we can get Heliod in for some big boy damage. Yep, I like that. Together we can exact justice. We almost have eight cards to be able to grab a uh, ox back, which will be nice. If he rolls out another big spell, we have a an Elspeth here. All right, we gotta remember that we have that uh, life link ability. If he chooses to go downhill. could also just have a straight up um, planeswalker removal spell. Yeah, he's eyeballing it. Oh, he played the... Oh, no. Don't play a land. Just keep it in your hand. Make me guess what you have. Playing the land doesn't do anyone any good. Okay. Is he going to play it again? Oh, he is. Okay. Okay. I see you. Okay. I see you, I see you. <laughs> okay. And it turns Heliod into not a creature. All right, all right. Oh, wait, is that enough, then? Oh, yeah. That's enough. Okay, cool. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, Exile Tarpa, if it's three or greater. Right, okay. Uh, we can roll Elspeth again, which I think is exactly what we're about to do. Is he out of cards to do that? Yeah, okay, so he's not going to be able to do that anytime soon. And now her uh, escape ability just becomes... Mm, two. Take one of those. One of those. Why not? Now, let's see here. We're at five. Yeah, well, we still need to roll up the tokens to cover her. Courage will bloom in all who seek justice. 
All right, man. It's up to you. What does he have at six? If he has Gary, it could delay the game enough. Okay, Hateful Eidolon is not going to do it. And he can't grab it from the graveyard anymore. Oh, it's two cards. Okay, yeah, so he can get in for... I thought it was three cards. He gets to draw a card as well. Okay. I think he'll actually take Conqueror's Death even though... Um... Oh, wow, really? Really? That was a shocking choice. I'll be completely honest. Huh. Okay. Okay. I see you. Um, we could go plus here and threaten, force him to... Oh, yeah, we could plus here uh, from Elspeth and force him to... Hmm. Or do we go wide? Because he's going to do this over and over and over. Um, I think we might want to... We could play the safer route. We could play the safer route and roll out some more tokens. That's probably this. Honestly, it's probably the safest route. I am proud of my comrades. Uh, we are going to attack with five. Celebrant. Let's roll him out for protection. Death touch. Indestructible. Yeah, and then I have uh, Elspeth in case he wants to get froggy. Yeah. Let's go here. It's fine. He has a Gary here. He could prolong the game pretty well. All right, cool. And our opponent's seen enough. Oh, major respect to our opponent. Um, that was a that was an aggressive. I was, I was like, are we gonna lose two in a row? So, um, very good job by our opponent. Um, the Ox actually came through, running one copy of Ox Agonus, uh, and he saved our butt. Uh, cruel, uh, cruel. Oh, excuse me. I keep saying Cruel Celebrant, but that's the uh, Orzov card. Careless Celebrant uh, is also a really nice body to throw out there because of her uh, two damage when she dies. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Let's see if we can go one more and actually go two and one. Um, we got blistered on the first game, being stuck on lands. Uh, won the second game in a pretty close uh, game. Uh, we got lucky. We did keep a uh, throw a possibility to filter our hand, which was very fortunate. Um, but... All in all, so far, so good. All right, uh, we're on the play here. We've got turn one, Elzade. Turn to uh, Careless Celebrant. We've got some high-end cards at five, both here. No double red, but we do have double white. I think this is okay to keep. Our opponent's probably looking at this and thinking that we're mono-white like they are. All right, we'll go to combat. One. Now this card's gonna throw him for a loop. Like, what is that thing? Expected Daxus here. Perfect. All right, now we bully them a little bit. He likes his Daxus, so I'm gonna let him keep it. We are now double red, double white. We have yet to see Hactus. 
in two games so far. There's four copies in here. I have to delete the video. There's no uh, <laughs> none of the cards that I mentioned. That just doesn't seem right. What does he roll out of three? Is he gonna see? So he probably has a banishing light, and it's like he doesn't want to lock down a bunch of weenies. Um, he's probably contemplating it right now, though. Oh wow, Terranika, very nice card. And what is it? It's a uh, when it attacks, right? So we will be leaving Careless Celebrant uh, untapped in order to deal with uh, Terranika. I don't think he's going to want to attack into it. Uh, of course, he could lock it down and then, but I mean, be wasting quite the spell for that. There we go. There's Heliod. Uh, I think we're going to. We could effectively punch with an Elsaid in order to gain life and make Careless Celebrant tougher. Um, but that would be unnecessary, I think. I think that would be unnecessary. Yeah. Okay, there's his own Heliod. Very nice. Now his is going to be a permanent. A land here would be very nice um, in order to hit uh, Elspeth and to uh, get rid of his Terranika, which is also double white. Let's see what he wants to do. No way. No way, dude. You're crazy. Don't do that. Don't do that. Because when every creature you control dies, right? Okay. Well, that's gonna die. It's indestructible, no life gain. Do we chump for the life gain? Hmm. I think we could also block here. Oh, it's indestructible. Fuck. Never mind. Good thing I paid attention to that. Uh, I think we can take the four. I'm not gonna... Pass... Yeah. I'm gain a life, but Heliot is no longer a creature. Interesting. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much, King. That is exactly what I wanted. And do we have another? We do. We at least have a creature. Uh, Perforos is another argument here, but he might. Oh, he might run Pegasus next turn. You know, maybe we go Perforos because he might run Pegasus if he does drop, grab a land, and that would be way more annoying. Hmm. Yeah. But the double white makes Heliod a permanent, or I mean a creature. Doesn't it? It does. I think we gotta do this and just hope that we... Yeah. Yeah. Alright, let's get in for five. If he goes Plains Pegasus, we'll be hurting. The fact that he's not immediately throwing out the planes makes me wonder. Okay. A three damage I couldn't care less about, honestly. Oh my god, so good. Yeah. Yeah, dude.
two, three, four, five, exactly five. There's another, there's another Heliot for him. Which is nice, he'll... Uh-huh. Uh, nine damage, um... Um, the thing is, we would be able to fetch it from the graveyard. So we'd be able to block, uh, gain a life, and then bring it, bring it or whatever we want back to the grave from the graveyard. I think we can do that. Or we could also give it protection. We could also sack it to get protection. Uh, yeah. Choose. Oh no! But it, it's okay. It's okay because we had to submit, pass here, block. Oh, it has prot white. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, we'll put it on him because we don't want it to push. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> Oh, they lose indestructible. I gotta remember that. I gotta remember that. A lot going on. Yeah, that's fine. Not exactly what we're looking for. We're bringing back Elsaid. Uh, with a plus. And I think we honestly need to hit Thrill of Possibility here. Because we need a Hactos or something to really... Oh, man. Porphyros is fine. I just think we honestly need to... Yeah. <laughs> I think we need to... Oh my god, no. <laughs> no. That is the opposite of what we want right now. <laughs> Alright, well. Here we go. Here goes, boys and girls. And there's the Pegasus. We might be in a bad way here. I think that might be GG for us. Just cannot draw a Hactos. Alright, guys. I think we're going to scoop here. Uh, let's go Let's go one more. Let's see if we can actually draw a, the card that the deck is built around. I think we just have to wait for... Uh, Wait to see if we can get in our opening hand. Now watch, we get all of them. We get all four. And they're legendary, so we can only play one. <laughs> but there's the uh, Mono White Devotion that uh, we were talking about. It's, it's, power it's very powerful in this uh, constructed event. There's only about uh, 10 or 12 hours left uh, in the event. So, but one of the nice things about this, um, and I'll mention it again later, is even though this event, of course, ends within about 12 hours, with a few minor tweaks, this deck is uh, decently viable. I think we're going to mulligan this. Uh, we don't have double red for either of the Phoenixes. We have no early interaction. Nope. Finally. There's old Hactos. We can keep this. Still not a lot of early interaction. We do have turn three Phoenix. We're on the play. That's fine. Agonus. Can, we'll see him again later. And here comes the Mono White Devotion. Oh, okay. Azorius. Nice. And we hit the second white for Hactos. All right, guys. The moment you've all been waiting for. We finally get an opportunity to... And no counter. Love that. 
the moment you've all been waiting for to see actually see the card that is on the face of the deck. <laughs> all right, locks down Phoenix, and here's uh, the exact deck that this is built uh, to counter. Not a three, not a three, and it's a three. Okay, good. So uh, if he has another Banishing Light, I'm going to be very angry. He probably does. <laughs> Please don't have another Vanishing Light. Not yet. Not yet. Oh, there we go. All right. Uh, we can go Perforous here. Uh, we can also just Threaten with Careless Celebrant. I think that might be it. They all have Life Link. Ugh, God. All right, it's a race. Here goes. He's not going to block, so honestly, I think waiting and throwing up Perforous next turn is the play. But we won't show him what we have just yet. Hactos cannot be blocked. We get in for eight. Next mountain. Focus. I think one more. One, two, three, four. One more red spell and we'll have uh, his devotion. Him locking down the Phoenix was a big boy move. Constellation here. He could lock down Perforous, I guess, if he has... Elspeth conquers death. Um, oh man, hopefully he doesn't draw another Banishing Light. That might be GG for us. This is the exact deck that we built this to try and deal with. Three is not what we wanted. We wanted two. We wanted two or four. Now there's Heliod. Okay, not too concerned yet. He does get another token. We get for three life. I th we have nine next turn. He gains three life. Gets a token. Okay. Not what we're looking for. Not what we're looking for. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, we obviously got to put equip it here. Gonna gain some life. Okay, let's go. It's just a race. It's a race now. Unfortunately, Pegasus is just so good. Okay. 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 Gets another. Gets another token with life link. Of course, a lockdown card here would be very nice. And luckily, with throw possibility, if we do get some garbage next turn, um, and we'll be able to toss it away and hopefully get something else. He's at six now. Let's see if he brings the house. There's Elspeth. Gonna hit Perforous. Okay, yep. Big damage, big lifelink coming. Yep. Seven. We need a lockdown spell to get rid of the. Uh... We need a lockdown spell. That is not going to do it. We're actually have to toss another Hactos. Come on, big money. No, that is not it. And we have. Oh uh... <laughs> no, it has indestructible. All right. See if he chooses to block with uh, Heliod. Does not have Indestructible. 
so I don't know if he read that entirely. I don't think it matters, though. Oh, man. Alright, I think that's a wrap for us. Let's try one more! Unless the, uh, the event is concluded. I think we might already be at two losses. Oh, that's a... Oh, that's a heartbreaker. <laughs> All right, well, we'll claim our prize on that. Um, well, what can we say about the deck? Um, unfortunately, you know, it's one of those things where you go to... Uh, you make this deck and you play it offline and you're having a great time. You know, having an over 50% win rate. And then as soon as you turn the webcam on, it all goes to hell. <laughs> well, I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, on the first game, we got flooded out. Uh, the second game against Mono Black, it was a close game. Uh, the third game, uh, we got stuck on some whack cards. We have uh, had too many Porphyros uh, show up and not enough Hactos until the final game. Uh, final game was just a legit opponent, Azorius Control, uh, with, as I mentioned, the Pegasus is just a monster creature. So difficult to deal with uh, in this format. Um, kudos to our opponent, I played it very well. Um, with uh, some minor modifications, uh, dropping a couple cards that probably don't fit into standard, like Careless Celebrant, Phoenix of the Ash, and tinkering with this a little bit, um, this is very uh, capable of playing uh, in standard. So uh, I'm still okay with uh, how we did, despite uh, running into a couple brick walls there. So anyways, as always, thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. Um, I also stream regularly on Twitch, and you can find me on Twitter. Uh, at 019. Uh, and with that, thanks everyone, and uh, have a good day.